Greetings, this is Greg. The Fulker DR-1 vs. Sopwith Camel is the most iconic fighter plane matchup of World War I, possibly of all time. These two airplanes were very evenly matched in real life and in the Rise of Flight simulation. In this video, I'll be discussing the turn performance of these two airplanes in Rise of Flight. While I talk, you can watch this online battle. The DR-1 here started with an energy advantage and the Camel is taking ground fire, which is slowing its rate of turn due to wing damage. The question of which plane turns faster and tighter comes up a lot. Both planes have an official turn rating of 9 in the Rise of Flight manual. Only the Sopwith Camel has a better rating. The Pup's rating is 10. All other planes have a number of 8 or lower. I normally fly German planes, but over the last couple months I've forced myself to fly the Camel and learn its secrets. The bottom line is that the DR-1 has better overall turning performance and better maneuverability than the Camel. However, and this is a big however, the Camel can outturn the DR-1 under some conditions. These conditions depend on a lot of variables. There are some pilots out there who fly the Camel and they're really good at stacking these variables in their favor. Thus, a few Camel pilots can routinely outturn the DR-1s. The number one variable you can easily control is fuel quantity. After flying the Camel and watching some of the top Camel pilots like Moro to see what they do, I'm convinced that some pilots are flying with really low fuel numbers. On a multiplayer server with icons, the average flight lasts about 7 minutes. So on average, you don't need a lot of fuel. I've noticed that these top Camel pilots are never in the air for more than 10 or 15 minutes before they land. They typically stay very near their own base and certainly never go over enemy bases. And they run for home after about 8 to 12 minutes or whenever they take damage. Probably because when you take damage with that low fuel quantity, any hit to the fuel tank is going to cause you to uh, have to make an emergency landing. The Camel flies for about 90 seconds at combat power on each percentage point of fuel. Thus, 10% fuel gets you 15 minutes at full power. The DR-1 only gets 60 seconds per point, so it would only need 15% to fly the same amount of time. Extensive testing and comparisons have shown me that with equal fuel in terms of time, these two planes have essentially equal turn performance. Next we have ammo. Ammunition is heavy. Fly with half ammo to improve turn performance. The Camel's gun sight is better than the DR-1's and the Camel is a much more stable gun platform. Thus, you'll use less ammo per kill. With only 15 minutes of fuel on board, half ammo in the Camel is all you're going to need. The next big variable is pilot skill, but more specifically, just how skilled the pilot is at flying the Camel. For the rest of this discussion, we're going to assume that the Camel has about 13% fuel and the DR-1 about 20%, so both are essentially equal in terms of fuel endurance, and each plane has half ammo. In the DR-1 and most other planes in Rise of Flight, turn rate isn't really all that dependent on pilot skill. For example, in the Fulker, in most turns, you can pull the stick all the way back to the stop without fear of stalling. That makes tight turns largely just a matter of banking and yanking. You do have to worry about rudder control, that's a big deal in the DR-1, but once you get that down, it's pretty easy. For the most part, all DR-1 pilots turn at about the same rate, assuming equal aircraft loadouts. There's another variable here of internet connection speed, but that's outside the scope of this discussion. The camel, however, is another beast entirely. If you pull the stick back too far in the camel, it stalls, and it's very sensitive about this. You must practice in the camel for at least an hour or two until you can recognize an imminent stall in all phases of flight and instantly recover. This is especially important to practice in turns. Spin recovery in the camel is important as well, the official manual has a recovery procedure I don't like. Uh, you should probably read it and maybe do it if, if you want. But I prefer to recover conventionally as discussed in my spins and snap rolls video. Although keep in mind that in a left spin in the camel, you need to move the elevator up and down to bob the nose down in the camel to force it out of the spin. Once you get the hang of this, it's pretty easy. Stalls in the camel are very abrupt and will easily lead to spin. So you need to recover as soon as you see any sign of a stall. The better camel pilots can fly the plane exactly on the edge of the stall, and when this is done, assuming fuel and ammo loads are equal, the camel will slightly outturn the DR-1. However, any imperfection will cause the camel to start to stall. The recovery will require moving the stick forward. This will reduce your average turn rate, 
and if this happens even once every 360 degrees per turn, the DR1 will come around and kill you. Thus, the camel pilot has to be really on his game to outturn the DR1, but he can do it. I have a suggested technique for doing this, which I'll demonstrate here against a very good and very well-known DR1 pilot. The key is to pull back just hard enough to barely outturn him. That way, in time, you'll get the shot, but pull any harder, and you may stall. It's a fine line. I'm in the camel here, and I'm fighting a really good online DR1 opponent. Notice I pull just hard enough to gain some angle on him. Then I reduce the rate of turn just enough to match his turn rate. As I do this over and over, I gain position. I don't have track IR and he does, so he knows I'm getting into firing position and he has a plan. As he looks over his shoulder, he's waiting until my wing blocks my view of him. When he can't see my head, he knows I can't see him and he'll reverse direction. At this point, it's tough not to get too aggressive and try and pull him into my sights, but don't do that. We only need to barely outturn him to win this fight. Now he's starting to go out of view and back in. I know as soon as my view is solidly blocked, he will reverse direction, and I'm ready for this. My spandows are cleared, my fingers on the trigger. Here he comes, and boom, headshot. The camel has a great gun sight. Its guns are very accurate. At this range, those shots into the critical area of the airplane are fatal. The key in this fight was preparation, with only 15 minutes of fuel and half ammo. The DR-1 also had similar numbers. During the turn fight, it was critical to avoid pulling back too much. That was a big key factor here. Too much, and most likely I would have stalled into the ground and lost the fight, or even if I recovered from an imminent stall, the DR-1 would have started to outturn me, and it would have taken a long time to make up that lost ground. In my time with the Camel, I learned that it's a fearsome opponent. It can beat any German plane in a turn fight except the DR-1, to which it's about equal or even better if blown really well. It's faster than the DR-1, and it's a much better gun platform. The Camel also has the ability to prop hang pretty well. This, combined with its moderate top speed, allows it to be a real threat to the Boom and Zoomers as well. Its big problem is that in multi-plane engagements, you will take some hits, and when it takes hits, its performance decreases a lot and it falls apart. Also, its crashes have a very low survival rate, so it's not a good airplane if you want to try and build up a long kill streak. My time with the Camel's over. I only flew it long enough to make this video. I predominantly fly German airplanes. I'm glad to get back to my beloved DR-1, D7F, and Halberstad 200 horse. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please leave comments and let me know your thoughts on the subject, and I look forward to seeing you in the skies in the Rise of Flight arenas. Thanks, and have a great day.